Welcome everybody to Solar Wholesale's DIY video. I am DIY Doug and I'm going to walk you through how to install your own solar. Let's go to the roof. Tools you'll need for your project are measuring tape, a lumber crayon or chalk, a chalk line, hammer, flat bar for prying shingles, impact driver with a half inch socket, drill with quarter inch drill bit, a one and a half inch bit sawzall, screwdriver, box cutter, wire strippers, and a channel lock. All right, so now that we're on the roof, we got to do the layout. One thing to make sure that we do before you get on the roof is make sure that you have the right safety equipment, either a harness and make sure your ladders are secure. Uh, where we're inside, I don't need that. <laughs> um, all right, so when doing your layout, every jurisdiction is going to have fire setbacks. It's going to be three feet from the ridge and usually three feet from the rake. So when you're first finding your, your array or where the spot you need to have your array at, you need to first measure that three feet down and then mark that off. So we're gonna mark three feet from the rake as well. So we know that our array needs to, our panel needs to sit right in here. Our first panel needs to sit right in there. From these measurements, you want to account for the panel overhang. And we usually go about 16 inches down. You do want to make sure that it's within that, that or the outside of that three feet, but you do also want to make sure that you're more towards the middle of a shingle so you can get a good seal. So just mark that off. And then for the next thing, you'll need a hammer. It's pretty easy to find a stud. You can just hit the roof and you're going to find there's a difference in variation, just like on a wall with your knuckle, you're going to find that that stud is right there. Now you go to the other side of the roof and duplicate those same measurements to create your layout. Different. Now that we have the marks on the opposite side of the array, now we're gonna chalk our line. Chalking the lines is gonna make sure that your array is, extreme, is very straight. Um, no roof is square and shingles are not going to be straight. So verify that you have your truss marked off correctly. We can hear it right there. There's that distinct sound. So you're going to mark that and you're going to use a drill and a quarter inch bit. Once you've found your first truss, most jurisdictions are gonna be every, every 48, um, you need some sort of a mount. So at, from here, we're gonna measure every two feet, and then on the next row, we're actually gonna stagger that so it's a zigzag of, of uh, attachments. Okay, I'm just marking this every four feet from where our truss was hit. Oh, please. Right there. And this makes sure all our mounts are inside our array. The studs there, not everything is always going to be exact and straight, right? So we need to make sure. There it is. Okay, and then from that, that first drill hole, we're gonna measure down 36 inches and mark that off. So we've got our first, our first hole drilled on there for the first row. We're gonna come down 36 inches on that same truss to start our row. And we're gonna mark that off and drill. And then what we're gonna do is stagger so that it's a zigzag across. And what this does is it distributes the load um, across the, the roof. So it's not everything on one truss. Then you verify with the hammer and drill it out.
Now onto the racking system. We use Snap and Rack. It is by far the easiest setup, especially for DIYers. It's very simple to put together. We're gonna to start with the flashing. So this will go up underneath the shingles, and we'll show you here in a minute. Um, one thing to, that's important is we do use an M1 Chem Link, which comes in your kit. You wanna make sure that you do a half circle around that penetration hole to make sure that no water gets into the penetration. Okay, when you get on the roof, you may need the pry bar to pop up some shingles. Um, inside, obviously, we don't have the sun beating down and, and sealing that up for us, but there is gonna be that adhesive seal that you may need to, to pop up. So, I'm gonna just grab the flashing, slide it under, line it up with that, that pre-drilled hole. And then you'll be using a half inch uh, socket to take the put the lag in. And then also, this is the L-foot. This is your attachment right here, the L foot and the saddle. The saddle is what's gonna, the rail is gonna sit in. You just wanna make sure that this, that's very snug to the roof so there's no leaking or no water can get underneath. And then that the saddle is actually facing down the roof. So right now I'm, I'm placing the rail. Um, you're not going to cut it on the ground. You can cut it on the roof, but to make sure that you have your array correctly laid out, um, you want to don't, don't pre-cut your rail. So now I'm just snapping in the rail into these saddles. Um, it is called snap and rack because you can actually hear it snap. What's nice too is it lets you freely move the rail so you can make adjustments on the roof. And there also is, in the L-foot, there's room to go up and down to make sure that your array is level. Okay, so for our roof, we're going we're gonna to start here at the top. And it's just a half inch as well. It's a nice thing about snap and rack is everything's a half inch. I'm just going to tighten that up right there. If your array goes longer than the four panels portrait, you're going to need a splice. It clips in just like those saddles do, just like so. Next up is your microinverters. We use AP systems. We either use a four to one or a two to one. This right here is a QS1, four panels per one micro. They still all operate independently of each other. Um, it's just a really slick setup. So you need to be a little conscious about where you're putting this on the roof because um, you will need to Make sure that your wires can get here. But in case they can't, we do have longer DC whips that will reach this. Um, we're gonna use these, these attachments right here. They're MLPEs. These just go in the rail and pop into place. You are gonna use two of them. You also wanna make sure that the riding is up when you're putting these on, on the rail. And also that these washers are going on top of these connection points, just like so. Ta-da! Next, this is the junction box that goes on the roof. This allows us to flash this in, bring the trunk cable into here so that you can go through the attic. It makes for a nice clean install. Okay, so you use the lid for a template We're going to cut that out with some tin snips. We do this so that it sits in and beneath the shingles. As you can see, it just slides right in there. Um, okay, and you can see Teddy's marked this because this is our, going to be our roof access point. There you go. Teddy used a one and a half inch bit. So on the back of the roof, on the roof junction box, there's also this guide of where you need to put more of that M1 so that you can make sure that's sealed and no, no, no water can get in there. So once you put the, the M1 chem link on the back to seal it, we use the screws that are included in the kit to screw down to the roof. 
Now we're going to be using a three quarter inch knockout so that we can get our wire down through the attic. And also through the side to run our trunk cable on the roof into the junction box. Uh, we're using a, a three quarter inch string relief hole. This is the, the hole that you run your cable through, but it provides a, a good waterproof seal. So next up, the microinverters, they hook up to a trunk cable, which is provided in the kit as well. Since this is the end of the string, then we do have what this is cut off here and we have a, a piece right here that just closes off that connection. But this just connects in like this. You can hear it click. And then the end of that, the end of this trunk cable, we are going to pull back this so we can see that in the junction box, but junction box, but this is the side, the trunk cable that's going to go into, into the junction box. And in the junction box, we'll have some wire nuts. We'll show you here in a minute, but then some 12, two Romex will actually come through the attic and connect into here. One of the main reasons we like the snap and rack is obviously the ease, but also because when you're doing wire management to keep your wires off the roof, there's this channel that you can set everything inside of. Okay, so you don't want wires on the roof because the heat will eventually um, cause problems for the wires. And if any inspector shows up in your local jurisdiction and sees wires on the roof, they will have you um, make sure that you pull those off the roof so there's no fire hazard. To help with keeping the wires off the roof, you do need to pull them tight. We do use UV rated uh, zip ties, so you can get a little bit tighter on your on your on your lines. Your trunk cable. Boom. What we're going to do now is we're going to attach a ground wire to our rack handle. That's with the simple ground bonding from Snap and Rack. It'll be in your kit. We're going to attach it into the Solarex box so then it can ground our full electrical system when that time comes. So this ground will attach to every row of panels. We only have one row, so we only need to attach one ground. Grab our half inch impact driver and make it snug. Next, we're going to set our end clamps. These end clamps are specific to snap and rack. They're hidden fasteners. They just slide it into your rail, and then there's a little pull tab to pull them tight once you set your panels. Again, they just slide in the rail and snap. They're easily movable along the rail as well. We'll repeat the process all the way down. Most of the time we tie into the knot in here because you're close enough to the microinverter, you don't need this much slack. These are your MC4 connections. You're going to clip these into these channels. And make sure when you are clipping into these channels, you make a site layout um, of where your modules are for monitoring later so that you can do, uh, so you can monitor your modules. One of the biggest issues we come across is people don't fully connect these MC4 connections. So when you're doing it, make sure you're listening for a click. Make sure you have that solid connection. All right, so we're gonna set our first panel. We're just gonna tighten these down just a little bit so that we can, we can st still move it, but square it up. These end clamps make it so that the, the array is really aesthetically pleasing. You don't have any rail sticking out the side. So you're gonna pull on that tab and that end clamp is gonna slide over the bottom of that panel. 
and then also with a half inch. Okay. There you go. In order to keep the array straight and nice looking, we try to line up the mid clamps with this set, the end of the second cells right here. And that way we ensure that it looks straight on the roof. Good. That one down so it doesn't move. So after you have all your panels up, then you're gonna to wanna to cut the rail to make sure it's flush. So this is a sawzall, you just, we're just gonna cut it just like this, just butt it up right up against this, the panel right here, and just saw that off. And then you do have end clamps as well to make it look all pretty. Um, you will just, just stuff this back in the, in the rail right here and just pop that on. So now that we're done with the roof, we go on to the, the electrical portion of the project. This is probably the most intimidating portion of the whole project. So if you are not confident, um, I would reach out to an electrician that understands solar, and sometimes we can help you with that depending on where you're located. Um, but we are going to go through everything all the way to the main service panel. So with the microinverters, we just use a 12-2 Romex wire. Um, it will come in your solar kit. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and strip the wires of the trunk cable so that we can wire nut it up and with the Romex wire. We strip an inch off the wire. The three wires that are exposed in the trunk line, there's, there's two lines and then one ground. We, and the ground wire is the green wire. The trunk cable will have three wires. You match the black to the black of the Romex and then the white is gonna go to the red and then the green is gonna to go to the ground wire in the Romex. After you connect the Romex wire in the roof junction box, that same Romex wire is gonna go out to the eave of your roof, where then you'll come out the eave into a junction box and go down to your combiner box. So as you come out of your attic, you'll have a junction box under your eave. The Romex wire will come through and then you're gonna, you'll have some THWN wire, it's 12 gauge wire in your kit and that's where you're going to hook up. It's the same black to black, green to ground, and white to red. So you have a three quarter inch hole in connection here for your liquid tight, uh, your conduit. You can use EMT, which is, a more, which is a solid pipe, but you have to bend it. So for DIYers, where you're, you're really probably not gonna be very good at bending pipe, this is very maneuverable. And so that, this is why we picked it in our DIY kits. You're gonna come down into the solar combiner box. This is where your solar strings, all your Romex wires will come into. And most of the time they're all gonna, one string is gonna be 20 amps. So in here you can see we have a double pole 20 amp breaker right here. And then also you can see your connection points in your, in your box right here. To make it easy, just do red on the right and then black on the left. And then your, your green wire is gonna go to this ground bar right here. Not all, not all systems are gonna look exactly like this. Some of them are gonna be different just make sure to follow your plan set. There's an electrical one line diagram on there that will, that will map this out for you. Sometimes there's gonna be some changes, but uh, this is the most common. Okay, so after the solar combiner box, we go to the AC disconnect. This gives you and emergency responders an easy way to turn the system on and off very quickly. And once again, we do red on the right, black on the left, and then you're making sure you're connected into your, your ground wire. And then last but not least is the main service panel. So your main service panel may not look like this, but in your plan set on the electrical one line diagram, you will have this laid out for you. In every kit, we do in, include stickers. This is for code. If you do an inspection, the inspector is gonna make sure that you have these stickers. In the plan set, it will map out where these stickers will go, but you make sure that you have them on in, certain, in some jurisdictions, they do have placards that you'll need, but we'll, we know and we'll help you through that. But these stickers are not just because we think they're cool, it's because they have to be here for safety. That wraps up the electrical portion of the DIY install. 
Like I said, everyone is gonna be a little bit different, but that gives you the basics. We do try to include all the breakers, combiner boxes, and wire that you're gonna need in your kit. Now that the panels are on the roof, you're gonna have someone from your local jurisdiction, whether it be the state, city, or county, come out and inspect the system and pass off on it. You'll receive a, some sort of a pass inspection letter or certificate that you will give to your power company. After your power company receives that, then they'll come out and switch your meter or put a new meter in depending on your, your municipality or power company and then you'll be good to go. If you have any questions please leave a comment below. I'm DIY Doug and that's how you install solar panels.